What's going on guys? Let's get right into it. If you're looking to catch some sheep's head and you want to set up your kayak specifically to optimize your results, this is the video for you, so stick around. That being said, my voice is a little hoarse. I'm getting over a cold and I apologize. I sound weird and not like I normally sound, but uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, so let's get into it. The kayak that I went with specifically for sheep's head fishing is the Old Town Big Water AKA the Old Town Predator, that's what the old version was called. They just changed the name to the Big Water and they didn't really change anything else. It's the same kayak with a different name. They just, I don't know, I don't really know why they, uh, they did that, but they did. Now, why did I go with this kayak? Well, let me tell you, it is because of the PDL drive. The instant reverse makes all the difference in the world when it comes to bridge fishing, which is when you're, you're, when you're sheep's head fishing, black drum fishing, 99% of the time, you're gonna be on a bridge piling and whenever you hook a drum or sheep's head or whatever right on against the bridge piling, you need to get out of that, you know, you need to back off so that you can get your fish out of there. And when you have instant reverse, like the Hobies are fine, but you gotta reach down there, pull the instant reverse. I've had that like fail on me before, like lock up. Anyway, just trust me, okay? Old Town is the way to go. You don't have to get the big water. I got that one because I'm six foot two. I'm a big guy. I like my room. They make smaller versions of the Old Towns that have the same drive. Just Whatever works for you, get that drive. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I went with the big white. Also just like repositioning on the bridge ponds, you know, you're fighting current, you're fighting wind, and having that reverse pedal drive helps you get into position and hold into position. Just, it's a game changer. I have every, I have Outback, Pro Angler, Autopilot, Big Water, like I've had every kayak you think of, trust me, when it comes to sheep's head fishing, around bridge pilings, around bridges, around structure, there is no better kayak, okay? There's not, okay? I mean, I have them all, and I specifically bought this one just for that. So, now let's talk, let's just get start from the front to the back. This thing I have right here, the guy I bought this kayak from had a motor on the front of it, and so that's what that mount is. Um, and I put pool noodles on it, so that way whenever I smack into the bridge pilings, it doesn't make a big boom noise, and also it doesn't damage my kayak. 99% of you guys probably don't have that, but if you can find some way to like put foam or something on the nose of your kayak somehow to keep from damaging it, I highly recommend it because otherwise I probably would beat the crap on my kayak already. Right here, I normally have a fish bag and I have the fish bag on my other kayak right now. I use the reliable fishing product or fishing, reliable fishing products, fish bag, it's always worked for me. I just swap them out between kayaks. I didn't want to switch it out right now just to make this video because, well, I'm probably not going cheap head fishing tomorrow. And then as far as my fish finder, I use a Garmin 94 SV. Again, same scenario. I, I swap on my, I'm not going to buy double of everything. It's too expensive. But I have, uh, I swap them out between kayaks. So that's why it's not here on this video. I got them my other kayak because I'm probably taking that one fishing next. The way I connect the fish bag, I put these bungee cords around the front handle right here. And then I have um, padlocks that I drilled into my kayak there and there, and I connect to it with carabiners. Okay, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Also guys, I do wanna let you know, I'll have um, uh, links in the description to all this stuff for as much of it as I can find. Some of them will be affiliate links, so I might earn a little money if you buy through those links, and I appreciate the support, because I, I like money, you know what I'm saying? I, who doesn't like money? Anyway, so what is this goofy looking thing hanging off of the side of my kayak? That is live scope. Now what is live scope? Because you know, if you're not, unless you're a bass fisherman, you may not have ever heard of it, because I didn't even know, well, I mean, I heard about it, but I was like, eh, bass fishing, I don't bass fish. Anyway, let me tell you what it does. So let's pretend that that tree is a bridge piling. I can set this thing, it connects to the fish finder that pretend the fish finder's right there, it's normally where it is. Okay, I can literally point this at my at the tree, okay, and it will show me every fish or if there are fish under that tree or not, or under the bridge piling, like in real time. Like it's not like a fish finder how it goes, mm, you know what I mean? Then you gotta wait for another image to come up. Eh. Nah, bro. Real time, you can see the fish swimming around, like pretend my finger is a fish and it's under the tree. It'll be like, blah, blah, blah. like you can literally sit and you could drop your bait down right in front of the fish and you can see it in real time. You can see if the fish runs away from it. If they get spooked, you can see if the fish tries to eat it. Like, bro, it's crazy. It's like next level. 
okay? It's not cheap, it's like $2,000, and it's not required, but I, I, it, definitely, it definitely helps, okay? So what, like the main thing that I noticed that has given me advantage is I don't, I no longer fish dead zones. Like you'll see fish on a bridge pond sometimes, Sometimes hard to tell if it's a sheep's head, maybe it's drum, maybe it's pinfish. You know, it really takes experience to, to tell the difference, and I'm getting there. I'm not a professional at it yet, but the main thing that it has helped me do is avoid dead zones. You get to a bridge, there's like 150 bridge pilings, and you don't know which one's a fish. You just start dropping down on random pilings, hoping that you get a bite. No, with this, I can go, I can scan every piling, and I know if there's fish there or not before I ever drop down. And if there's not fish there, then I don't drop down because what's the point? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's a game changer. It's not cheap, so not required. You know, you can, I mean, I think I'm the only idiot that I even know that has it, but, uh, uh, you know, that's not a bass fisherman, but it's, it, it is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Okay, moving on. Kayak cushions, I have a kayak cushion on every kayak I own. Changes the game. It like is the most comfortable thing ever. I've had a couple of back surgeries and like I can sit in my in my chair for like, you know, eight hours if I need to um, fishing and like my back doesn't hurt nearly as bad what it would if I didn't have them there. So it's definitely a game changer. Um, what do I use to power the live scope? I have a 30 amp hour Naqua battery that I plug directly to the live scope and a 20 amp hour battery powers my Garmin that's normally sitting right there. You can get one of those units that like you can have one battery and everything that you, all your electronics will run off of it, but they say don't do that with live scope because you need like clean direct power to it or else it can mess with the image. I don't have any personal experience with that. It's just what a bunch of videos I watched said to do when I was doing research on this. So I just did a straight connection to one battery just to avoid the problem because when it comes to electronics, I'm known to have a lot of problems and I just want to do everything I can to not have those problems. All right, so this is my catch board. It's uh, just a big ruler. It's lightweight, it's nice, you know, it's a ruler. but. The, the reason why I got the catch board is in case I ever want to fish tournaments. Most tournaments require a catch board. You can get a cheaper one if you're not concerned with that, but the catch board is nice. And again, if I, if I ever want to fish tournaments, I got it. So anyway, um, this is a shovel. I use that to beat burn, bar, barnacles. I use that to beat barnacles and oysters off the side of pilings. You can get a shovel anywhere, but uh, that's the one I use. Um, let's see, what else? Let's see. Let me move these batteries out of the way here. So as far as how do I wire all this crap, um, I, I didn't drill any holes because I switch all my stuff back and forth between my other kayak a lot. So I just shove everything into here and then like just kind of slam this on top of it and close it the best I can before I go out. Um, probably not the spot, you know, it may not be the most professional, clean looking thing to do, but it kept me from having to drill holes. And, you know, if I did drill holes and run wires through the kayak, I would not be able to switch. I'd have to like literally unscrew crap. And I mean, you're not gonna do that. So um, I, I did it that way so that I can easily, um, you know, swap back and forth between kayaks. If you're like dead serious about getting this live scope and you wanna see exactly how it all works and how to like, um, wire it. I'm sure there are tons of other videos on YouTube. I'm not like great at wiring stuff. I got the job done, but you wouldn't want to watch a tutorial from me. All right. <clears throat> as far as my leashes go, I use Never Lost Gear leashes on everything. I got scissors. I got, oh, small fish grips. When you're sheep's head fishing, you want the small ones. The big fish grips do not fit in a sheep's head's mouth very good. They got those small, narrow mouths. Smaller ones work better. Um, and then I just have pliers over here. Oh, this right here. This is the boomerang. Um, Snips, I do not cut line any other way. I don't use my pliers for line anymore. These are cut braid, fluorocarbon, mono, whatever. And it's just like so convenient and so nice. They're like $12. If you don't get anything else from this video that I'm telling you that you should get, you need to get that even, I don't care what kind of fisherman you are. Those things are like, do they change the way that I like retie tackle? It's, it's really nice, trust me. Um, all right, moving back here to the back of the kayak. What do I have in my kayak crate? I got gloves because sheep's head will cut your freaking hands faster than you know. You could say I'm not a man because I wear gloves all you want, but you know what? My hand's not gonna get ripped open. I'm not going to ER. Sheep's head have sharp stuff everywhere. They're like a fish made out of daggers. I do not play, bro. I'm, I'm not trying to get cut. 
I don't care. I got a tow rope. I always keep a rope in there. Okay, I got a buddy named Dallas. He's always screwing something up. One of us might need towed. Um, Yozuri pink floor carbon. I got 10 pound, um, 15 pound, 20 pound, and 30 pound. Uh, the 30 is for black drum, but uh, you know, I use the 10 if the sheep's head are finicky and I move up from there depending on if I'm getting broke off or I don't know, whatever mood I'm in. But uh, that, that's the best line that I've found. And I like it best because it's just, it comes in these real small spools and it doesn't take up a lot of room in my crate. I'm, I like having, as, as you know, I have a lot of crap, so I like to keep everything as you know, small as possible. Um, I am a ginger, so um, I'm sponsored by Copper Tone Sports. No, I'm not really sponsored by them, but I should be. I use a lot of sunscreen, sunscreen, you know, it's important, bro. Especially if you're a ginger, you don't get skin cancer. Uh, or, or just a nasty sunburn hurts like hell. Okay, and then I have my, my tackle box. So let's talk about my tackle box. What do I got in my tackle box? What do you got? Let me comment. Let me know what you think I got in there, huh? Yeah? You guessed it. I got bird of prey jig heads. I like these light ones the best, but sometimes the current doesn't allow you to get away with it. So sometimes I'll go heavier and sometimes I have to go even heavier than that. If I had to use a jig head even bigger than this, like the current's that bad, then I probably should just not be fishing that day because you know, that means that the conditions are pretty rough. Um, all this other stuff is for different types of fishing, but I use pretty much exclusive bird of prey jig heads for sheep's head fishing. Um, except for whenever they're being super finicky and then I'll just use like a J hook. I use the um, O'Shaughnessy live bait hooks and then I'll put like a little split shot on there to get it down. That's when they're being super finicky. But usually when they're, when they're being super finicky, they don't eat anyway, no matter what you do, or you'd have to try like so hard, it's like not even worth it anymore. So it's, it can be very frustrating whenever you have to like force the non-hungry fish to eat. It just, or you know, the finicky fish, it's just, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, you ever been sheep's head fishing, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it can be hard to get them to eat sometimes, it's freaking annoying. But uh, anyway, yeah, bird of prey, man, those, those are the best jig heads on the market, in my opinion. So uh, use code REDBEARD10, I do get a little kickback. I partnered up with them recently, and uh, but I was using them for like years before that happened. I love bird of prey. If you're a local fisherman, you know that like everybody uses bird of prey. Like it's, they're just, they're the bomb, dude. Anyway, now let's talk about the final thing that I do for sheep's head fishing. And uh, this right here is like real smart. I come up with this and I was pretty proud of them. It's a pretty smart thing to do here. So I bring two different rods. One is the toad fish. One is the toad fish convict rod. It is five foot 11 inches. Now this one is for fishing in tight quarters where like you got a bunch of pines around you, you don't have much room, whatever. It's short and sometimes you get in situations, sheep's head fishing around bridges where like you just don't have a lot of room to set the hook or back out of there or whatever. So having a shorter rod can really make a difference. The problem is like, let's pretend I'm sitting right here. I'm standing in the same spot. Look, it does not reach the end of my kayak, okay? And so I can't fish off of the front because like you want to be right up against the piling. If I just do this, I'm going to be like, you know, one, two feet off of it. And that's not good. You're probably not likely to hook up. <clears throat> now, let me explain what I'm talking about in case you're not experienced, okay? When you're sheep's head fishing, most of the time, um, the sheep's head are going to be in the calm spot of the water. The, um, dang, the eddy. They call it an eddy. And what that is like, let's say that the current is like, let's pretend that this tree is a bridge pine, okay? I keep using my tree as a bridge pine, but the water is, the current's going that way. It's going that way towards the house, okay? Now, the, the tree is gonna block the flow of water right here, and that's where you're gonna wanna fish. So you wanna take your nose of your kayak, okay, and ram right up against that tree. And then that way you're not getting blown off of your spot because the piling is keeping the water, keeping the current from pushing you away. Okay, that's also most likely where the fish are gonna be sitting because all the food source is gonna be coming to them. The current's gonna be carrying a bunch of food to them, right? Theoretically. Anyway, so that is whenever you need a seven foot six rod. And I'm gonna be honest, rod don't really matter. Any lightweight inshore rod pretty much will work. I mean, we could discuss whether you want a medium one or whatever, but you know, as long as it's like a lighter weight, nice quality inshore rod, I mean, they all do a good job. That toadfish one's really nice, but I think mostly I like it because it's short. But anyway, if I'm sitting here like this and I got this rod, this one's what, seven six? Yeah, seven six. Look, see where the tip of it is? It's on the end of my kayak, especially if I extend my arm. Hell, now it's in the front, it's in front of my kayak a little bit. See? 
so I can fish right up against the piling when my nose of it's in there. So, yep. And I use, again, of course, Bird of Prey jig heads on both rods. Uh, you know, usually I use 15 pound fluorocarbon and uh, I do, I tie like eight foot of 15 pound fluorocarbon on there with uh, an FG knot. I know it sounds like a lot, but sheep take can be finicky, bro. And uh, I tie an FG knot. If you don't know that knot, you need to learn it. It is a game changer for like all kinds of fishing. I don't use double uni anymore. The FG knot is thinner and it goes through the eyes of your rods much easier. And that's pretty much it, guys. Most of my videos so far have been like entertainment videos showing y'all like me out fishing. This is the first one that I've done where I kind of show y'all how I set up and why I do different things. So if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments section. If it helped you out, hit the like button. If you want to buy something, click the links in the description below and, you know, buy something. But uh, other than that, y'all, thank you for watching. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. I respond to every comment. I'm just a little small time YouTuber, so I still have the time to do that. Maybe one day I'll be so big that I won't have time to talk to y'all, but I need y'all's help getting there. So uh, I don't know if I said subscribe yet, but um, if you could do that, that'd be great. All right, see y'all in the next one later.